Hey, what's happening, everyone? It is I, the man, the myth, the mustache, Tim here, and I have a brand new video for you. Welcome to part 15 of What If Deku Was an All For One Fan. Please sit back and relax, because you are in for a treat. With that out of the way, let's get this story going, shall we? All For One placed a hand on Tactical's shoulder, the pair overlooking the members of the League of Villains, along with the spies Tactical had working for him within multiple factions in Japan. Mei Hatsume, Chronostasis, Shin Nemoto, Curious, and Mina Ashido. Smiling as he looked down on them all, Tactical adjusted his tie. So glad everyone could join us here this evening. I'd like to make a few announcements before we begin. First off, I must regretfully say that Dr. Ujiko is no longer with us. It seemed the doctor could no longer handle his duties and committed suicide within his own lab. His work, however, will be continued and expanded upon in ways he could only dream. Tactical's words filled the room, only a select few knowing the truth behind Ujiko's demise, and all who knew of it also knew of his betrayal. That was the first time they'd seen someone cross Tactical, and what happens to them as a result. Secondly, I'd like to welcome my network of undercover agents from the current key players on the board. Thank you all for your support and cooperation with our objectives. Gesturing to the groups of spies, Tactical lightly applauded their efforts, gathering information from the Shie Hisekai, UA, and the MLA. Each spy had a story to tell behind their loyalties to the League. Chronostasis and Shin Nemoto were approached by Tactical and made to realize they were little more than tools with an expiration date to overhaul, who would either kill them both or abandon them after their quirks were erased. Mina Ashido owed loyalty to the League long before Tactical had joined. Her job as the UA spy planted by All for One was far more easier after Izuku had been revealed as the villain Tactical, along with the various members of Phoenix Squadron being traitors too. May and Curious followed Tactical and All for One simply out of sheer fascination for the two multi-quirk users. Thirdly and lastly, I would like to announce that I shall be taking the temporary role of the League's physician until a suitable substitute can be found, as well as head of Nomu Production. I'd additionally like to congratulate Labrava on her promotion to head of support gear and engineering. After he finished his announcements to the League, the members slowly began to applaud. Now, on to business. I have been watching the media like a hawk, and it's been a whole week since I Island fell to us, and more importantly, All Might perished. Yet nothing has been announced about our accomplishments. At least, not to the public. Now for the next half, I would like to invite Labrava up to talk us through our next move, whilst I go over some notes. Tactical stepped back from the podium, allowing Labrava to take center stage, and continue the announcement on Izuku's plan. Ahem, <clears throat> yes, thank you, Tactical. Well, with the assistance of Mei Hatsume and Tactical, I have managed to adapt the communication system to now have global range no matter our location. This island could be in orbit, and we'd be able to access the media of every country down there, but I digress. On the 15th of this month, so only three days from now, we shall send out a live global broadcast to truly reveal ourselves to the world and not be hidden by the heroes. And more importantly, tell them that All Might has been dead all this time. Now, with subtitles for non-Japanese speaking countries. Labrava giggled at the last part. This truly would be the most viewed live stream she'd ever worked on. The three days passed, and then it finally arrived. Izuku had spent most of his time in his personal labs, working on a pet project referred to as the Alpha Project. The members of the League gathered on a stage all in view of the camera. Labrava quickly joined the rest of the League on the stage. Everyone watched the countdown from five to zero. Upon hitting zero, the screen behind the camera read that it was recording. At that second across the globe, every screen had their previous display interrupted by the entire League of Villains standing on a stage, all shouting, we are here. People of the world, I am Tactical, and we are the League of Villains. Your heroic defenders have been lying to you all. They've been keeping secrets. 
Floating just to the side, Tamura passed Izuku by wearing his signature golden mask. Indeed they have, indeed they have. Let's start with I Island, huh? Eh? It was never lost at sea. We just attacked it and made ourselves at home. Now this next part, I oh so wish to share with you all. But that honor falls to another. Tamura cackled as Kurigiri opened a warp gate between him and Izuku, allowing all for one to step out and join the league. He stood tall and proud in his finest black suit and helmet covering his face entirely from the world. Thank you, my two young prodigies. Yes, people of the world, the heroes hide a secret from you all, one that will shatter your peace. All for one laughed beneath his helmet, and quickly his voice, Izuku's, and Tumura all rang out at once. All Might is dead! All for one shouted, clapping his hands. All Might is dead! Tumura laughed with a spiteful glee. All Might is dead! Izuku called out with a sinister grin and a foul glow in his eyes. As the three villains announced this, every screen cut to an Eye Island camera feed, showing a recording of a weakened All Might shriveled up into a skeletal man who was eventually decayed by both Izuku and Tamura. The world's heroes fell silent as they watched this. So many of them had been kept in the dark about All Might's demise, too. Tactikill smiled at the camera as he spoke. I warned you all, a new era was coming. And just as I said, Izuku paused before everyone in the league, including All for One, loudly stated, We will prevail. As the statement, We will prevail, rang out, a muscular woman with blonde hair styled similar to All Might's dropped to her knees in tears as she watched the TV screens that dotted the commercial area in New York. In Japan, a slender male wearing glasses and a suit dropped a heavy stamp on the ground as he watched his laptop in disbelief. Then he looked to a poster of All Might on his wall and screamed out, enraged. UA's students and staff all watched horrified that Izuku Midoriya's words from his sports festival speech were never a warning for the villains of Japan, but a warning for the heroes. And worse yet, they had just witnessed him stand beside the most powerful villain to walk Japan with confidence and pride. Within a matter of 12 hours, According to I Island's database, heroes were resigning left and right across the globe. Izuku chuckled to himself as he watched the numbers of resignations rise and crime rates rise as well. Happy birthday to me. His glowing green eyes narrowed on the computer monitor in his room as he looked through the experimentation notes Chronostasis had given to him. Soon, the green-haired son of All for One scowled at an image of a young girl covered in bandages and scars, just like his own. Overhaul had a date with the Grim Reaper, and Tactikill would be sure to sharpen his claw's blades just for the occasion. Deep within the bowels of the Hero Commission building, a meeting of heroes both from Japan and outside, along with various VIP personnel, gathered to discuss the new threat the League now posed. Thanks to their hard work, the Commission had gathered a large amount of intel on the entirety of the League members they knew of. Sheets of information on each villain were spread across the table for the gathered heroes and civil servants. The gathered individuals were Melissa Shield, David Shield, Sir Night Eye, Gran Torino, Nezu, G-Force, Endeavor, Hawks, Stars and Stripes, the President of the Commission, and the Japanese Prime Minister. This video is sponsored by ExpressVPN. ExpressVPN allows you to change your IP address, making it harder to track and securing your privacy. In addition to providing safe passage through the web, you can also expand the reach of your favorite streaming services like Disney+. Let's say if you're from the United States, you won't be able to watch any of the MCU and Sony Spider-Man movies. But by switching your location to Japan, you can access them whenever you want. Check out the link in the description to get three extra months when you purchase the 12-month subscription plan that costs $99.99 a year. This deal is for a limited time, and thanks to ExpressVPN for sponsoring this video. As you can see, each information sheet makes for grim reading. Luckily, the mole inside the league remains undetected. However, for sake of their safety, I will not be naming them. 
so they can remain in deep cover for as long as possible. But they've seen Izuku active on the battlefield, and have made it clear that if he shows even the tiniest hint of suspicion, they're pulling out of cover before Izuku turns the tables on our mole. Sir Night Eye spoke clearly and concisely as he scowled at his sheet, detailing all for one, whilst Inko stared at the two sheets marked Tactikill and Ragnarok. I've eyes move, frankly. Izuku Midoriya was a highly intelligent and powerful student whilst attending UA, and he was likely hiding his true capabilities, something his intel sheets does show. The question remains, how do we proceed? Thanks to Stars and Stripes Agency mobilizing here as soon as the global statement was made, we have regained much control of the streets of Japan. Still, I would hazard a guess that the League is experiencing a growth in its ranks. If not, they are most definitely planning on expanding. Nezu sat, frowning at the sheet of gentle criminal, as Nezu had seen that thief drinking from his favorite teacup during the broadcast. The audacity of that man! Frankly, I think mine and Endeavor's agency should launch a joint attack on I Island, take out All for One, Golden Fox, and Tactical for good, and be done with it. Without those three, this League of Villains would turn on each other like a pack of starved, rabid beasts. Plus, we take out Tactical, no more Nomos. Stars and Stripes slammed her fist on the table, pulling everyone's eyes to her as she growled out her plan to deal with a League. I'm afraid it isn't that simple. When I was there, I saw that League's group cohesion. They brought me and All Might down like it was nothing. If Hisashi... Ragnarok hadn't snapped back into his humanity, we'd all be dead. Tactical and Golden Fox are a force to be reckoned with, and we didn't even have to deal with All for One at the same time. Inko spoke up in a polite manner with a look of worry in her eyes, as begging the Commission not to even remotely consider Stars and Stripes' plan. Elsewhere, not far from the meeting, a teenage girl was putting on her white uniform and beret. She grinned as she sipped her tea and sat in the center of her room. The third-year student of the Sei Academy looked up from her tea as she calmly witnessed a warp gate open before her. Tactical slowly floated out, his metal claws outstretching from his back. The girl chuckled as she looked at him. Certainly took you long enough. The girl spoke with confidence and venom in her tone, as she stared down Tactical through her monocle. Taking a second sip of her tea, she raised her eyebrow at Tactical. Excuse me? You mean to tell me you were expecting me? You may have an intelligence quirk, but how could you have predicted this? The girl once again smirked, gesturing to empty cup upon empty cup on her desk by her computer. Ever since your little global announcement a few days ago, I've been drinking nothing but tea and came to the conclusion that you or All for One would come for either myself or Nezu to steal our intelligence quirks. Tactical broke out into laughter as he copied his idle signature villainous clap. Excellently deduced. Excellently deduced. Nezu was my original target, but that rat is currently guarded too heavily. Now I must ask before I take your quirk for myself and end you, why are you so relaxed? The girl copied his clap and pushed her wheelchair towards her computer table. Inputting her password, she had a recording open of Izuku's speech during the sports festival. A few intel files on the League members hacked from the commission mainframe, and to top it all off, a video recording of All Might's death. I've been listening and watching these on loop and reading these files over and over. Little to say, I figured out one thing about you, Izuku. You idolize not just all for one, the person but the quirk itself, a trait I must admit I share. I've kept my mouth shut about it for years because I had presumed all for one was dead, and I was the only one who thought this way about the symbol of fear himself. So allow me to make you an offer. Instead of stealing my quirk, let me keep it. Let me join the League and I will serve as a spy from Say I Academy during the licensing exam. I'll collect info on everyone who attends, their quirks, their weaknesses, and when I'm done, I'll join the League, truly. What do you say? Do we have a deal? Hmm. A new recruit or a new quirk? Which to pick? Tactical molded over internally before exhaling deeply, his eyes glowing slightly brighter. We have a deal. But frankly, you had me sold on the evidence you too are an all-for-one supporter. But, 
Psycho and Telly. If you betray me or the League, you will suffer the consequences. With those parting words, Izuku left Intelli's home through a waiting warp gate. Well, Tactical, did it go as predicted? All for one questioned as Izuku entered his office from the warp gate. It went exactly as I predicted. Looks like the intel on her was correct, just as Hagakure said. But what I didn't predict was she managed to access and take a few intel documents on us from the Hero Commission. We have a traitor among us. Tamura snickered as he sat at a desk playing on his phone, purposefully playing the sound effect from his Among Me game after Izuku spoke. Well, Izuku, if our games are anything to go by, you'll hunt them down before the week is out. Personally, I think Monoma's kind of sus. Izuku face-palmed his helm, groaning through his voice changer at Tamura's jokes. Tamura, please, take this seriously before I destroy every trace of that game from your devices. Now, how has One for None been acting for you? It's my understanding the quirk is sentient to a minor extent and affects everyone differently. Izuku looked at his brother, awaiting an answer. Honestly, I've had to use the training room ten times a day. I found I become so much more destructive when I use it. I don't get to do that mind control thing you can. Tomura shrugged at his younger brother with a slight smile as he won a round of Among Me against the other members of the League who are currently on standby or relaxing. So then, Tactical, what is your next plan? Or do you plan on going on a traitor hunt? All for one inquired, leaning back in his chair. Well, Father, I've dispatched Kyoka, Mustard, Dobby, and Toga to put us in contact with the Shie Hisekai, which should take about three days to sort out. In the meantime, Tamura and I will hunt this traitor and make them wish there was such a thing as hell because it'll be better than what I'm going to do to them. A few days passed by, and the four League members sat in a room with Overhaul and his eight bullets. So let me get this straight. Your bosses, all for one, Tactical and Golden Fox, the people who hacked the planet and killed All Might, want us to join your group. Overhaul leaned forward, raising an eyebrow at the four villains who sat across from him. No, nothing like that. We want to work with the Shie Hisekai on equal terms. Neither faction absorbs the other. Jiro spoke carefully through her mask, knowing full well the capacity of Overhaul's quirk, and what he's done and continues to do to a child. She hid her anger well as Overhaul began to nod. Fine. With the League's help, we can accomplish our goals a lot faster. We have a deal. I'll be expecting a face-to-face -face meeting with your leader, Tactical. He seems to be the one calling the shots besides all for one. Nodding, the four slowly departed Overhaul's presence after calling in a warp gate. Did you seriously mean any of that, Kiyoki? Zuzu doesn't exactly seem the type to make a deal like that with a guy like that. Toga asked Jiro as the group were back at Eye Island and the gate shut behind them. Yeah, that guy is a total creep. If it wasn't for his eight lackeys and his stupid quirk, not to mention Izuku's orders, I'd have burned him to ashes, Dobby grunted. Izuku wouldn't do anything like that. You guys need to have a little faith, right, Jiro? He's gonna stab those Yakuza losers in the back, knowing him. Mustard laughed, holstering his rifle to his back. Oh, Izuku is planning something big with those Yakuza, and it ain't good news for overhaul. I can tell you that much, but... Izuku hasn't exactly shared everything with me yet. You know how much of a perfectionist he can be about his plans. Guess we have to wait. Jiro sighed through her voice-altering mask as she split off from the group to head towards Izuku's office to give her report. As Jiro stepped toward the door, she could hear an aggravated mumbling, likely Izuku plotting something. Best not to disturb him yet, but listening in couldn't hurt, could it? Okay, what in the name of All for One is wrong with you? Uh, maybe I should just... No, that won't work. Ugh, stupid. Wait, maybe that'll be the answer. Yes. I just have to perform a simple... Remove that and... Yes! That's the answer. And worst case scenario, you'll be brain dead like the other invalids. Kyoka, you can come in. I know you're there. 
Izuku coldly exclaimed towards the door as it opened for Jiro, letting her into Izuku's office and makeshift lab. As she walked in, she saw Izuku leaned over a table covered in papers next to a tube containing an unconscious Hizashi, or Project Ragnarok, as Izuku liked to call it now. I'm sorry, Izuku. I just wanted to wait until you were finished before coming in. I know how you can get when you're deeply involved in your work. Izuku smirked as he spun his chair around to face Jiro, his eyes glowing their sinister black and green. Kyoka, please, you're my right hand. I gave you a copy of my office keycard for a reason. Nonetheless, I appreciate you electing to not just barge in. So, how was shore leave in Japan, and how was overhaul and his Yakuza? Smiling, Izuku looked down at a pad going through the names and quirks of various students who had attended the licensing exams, seeing who had passed and failed. Even laughing at the fail beside the names Katsuki Bakugo, Momo Yayorozu, and Shoto Todoroki. Ugh. Keeping Toga and Dabi away from each other's throats was exhausting. Mustard was helpful, at least. I can see why you two get along so well. As for the Shiei Hisekai... Overhaul is all in, but he wants a face-to-face -face with you. I don't think he realizes it isn't just all for one who can steal quirks anymore. Forget digging his own grave by asking for a face-to-face -face with you. He might as well be making his own coffin, too. Kyoka twirled her earphone jack as she gave her report to Izuku, and the pair of villains grinned at each other once the report was finished. Oh, Kyoka, could you stick around for a moment? I need someone here just in case something happens. Izuku quickly looked to Jiro as he sent a text to both Psycho Intelli and Kuragiri. A warp gate opened in the office, and from it emerged Intelli. But quick as a flash, several heroes rushed through the warp gate as well. Sorry, Tacticill, but I have no intent on losing my quirk after giving you that fake intel. Intelli smirked. Oh, you mean the data you sent me? Yeah, I deleted those files as soon as you sent them to me. You think I'm dumb enough to download a virus into I Island just like that? Even though you disguised it pretty well. Also, seriously, these are the best heroes you could get? Ugh, I don't even see a point in killing them myself. Feedback, you got the heroes right. As for Intelli, leave her to me. Cackling, Izuku launched a claw from his back at Intelli without even getting out of his seat. Jiro nodded, withdrawing her stun batons. With pleasure. I could use the workout and stress relief after dealing with Toga and Dobby's squabbles. As Jira retorted the tactic kill, she blinked from hero to hero in a shimmer of light, striking them over and over with her batons, leaving them no room to fight back or defend against her attacks. As every time Jira would appear from somewhere new, she hit them and then vanished again. That was too easy. Jiro laughed through her mask, standing over a pile of either deceased or unconscious heroes. Turns out you can kill someone if you electrocute their brain enough times, or perform a sonic blast at extremely close range. Indeed. Ah, it even has that new quirk taste. Izuku said with a smile as he threw away the drained corpse of Psycho and Telly with a metal claw. So, Izu, how did you know her intel was a virus? Jiro looked over to Izuku as he finished draining the quirk from Psycho's lifeless body, thanks to his one-for-none quirk and claw pack. You honestly thought I wouldn't have spies in the commission or the other hero schools by now? I already had the data on the exams. She just revealed there was a spy in the league. Something my commission spies didn't know about, meaning whoever it is, they report to the president of the commission. Plus, I had Hagakure tail her, and she told me everything Intel I here was plotting before I even went to try and take her quirk. Izuku smirked as he used his telekinesis to collect all the blood in the room into a floating orb of blood, pouring it away into various blood packs for Toga. And that's our video for the day, so thank you all for sticking around. I hope you enjoyed it. Before I go, there are a few things I'd like to go over with you. First off, I want to thank our patrons, BD Flames, Ethan Davis, Terry Chills, Shifter Meals, Adam Zagel, Zill, ZavBeat03, and Joshua Phelps. Secondly, I also want to thank all of our YouTube members. Toya Costa, Rob the King, Sith Lord 906, CF2364, 
and Knuckles, Rimiyu Tempest, Angel Juarez, Donald C. Stewart, Bryant Greer, and Demonized Fox. Thirdly, if you're in the mood for some great storytelling, We the Celestials has got you covered! Our We the Celestials, My Hero Academia, and Naruto What If channels retell the story of their namesake animes with a twist. Check it out if you're interested. Fourthly, on behalf of We the Celestials, I want to thank everyone involved in today's excellent content production. Their details can be found in the description below. Give the writer and the editor some love, they need a lot of it. Finally, if you like what we do here at We the Celestials, I want to extend the invitation to join our team. There's only one caveat, you must be 16 years or older to join our crew. You can sign up for whichever category fulfills your interests by joining the recruitment discord in the link in the description below. And that's it for today's video, so thank you all for watching and have an amazing day. And as always, be kind to yourselves, be kind to others, and stay awesome. This has been Tim, Mustache out.